Well, hello, friend, and welcome to another episode of Van Life Living in New York. I was just at another park and did a short video that'll be the video before this one. This is kind of like a part two. But I'm going to look kind of ridiculous and, and bore you to death so that you don't listen. <laughs> and anybody that knows me will understand why I would say that. Because... I'm telling you some truth here, friend, but I don't want you to believe anything I say. If, if you don't have the backbone to go do your own research, you should not listen to the things I say. Right? Because I'm on here talking about Jesus. Friend, I just stopped at this place for a burger. And it was a stand outside of a hardware store. And they're using real meat. You know, the kind that they actually had to crush down to put on the stove, not that flake, fake flat stuff. So this give you a good burger. Yep. So I'm going to talk some truth here, friend, and on the last video I told you there were some things coming here. I talked about it in this nation, about what's going on, and nobody will want to believe it's true. And if you know, like I said, if you're not a person who does any research, then I suggest you don't listen to this. I never eat on my camera. I'm doing things here to kind of annoy you, almost. I don't want you to go look at anything unless you're willing to do the research. Because America is Mystery Babylon. I'm not going to lie to you. And I'm going to explain to you some of the reasons you'll know that and how to go investigate that. This is good food, friend. Any of you that have been following me know I'm a truth teller, and that's it. I, I'm not here to, to wiggle half a tongue. I have to tell you the whole truth, which means I have to tell you the truth of love and the love of truth, and that is that my Father is love and that He created the world so that He may know love by experience through you. But if you don't make that choice at the end of the age, there is a debt to pay. And America didn't choose that, and they're the second fruit, right? The second nation declare themselves one nation under the God of Abraham. Right? The Christian nation. So, if you understand geology, and, and I'm not going to give you all the details, because you're going to have to go look this up, because I don't even want you to believe me if you're not willing to figure this out, because I'm not here to scare you. Never have been. But if I don't tell you the truth, you're going to listen to these Pharisees. They're going to tell you lies, and you're going to get caught in the dark. And you need to get some oil for your lamp. Beautiful day to be out walking. It is a lovely day, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, two I know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I know it was so nice. I had to stop and get a burger so I could have a picnic. <laughs> I know. I said, oh, look at all the people picnicking. This is too cool. Yeah. The beginning of March. I know. I I think I woke. I went to sleep in winter and woke up in summer. Yep. I 
I imagine some of you were like, would this guy get on with what it is he was talking about, right? I'm getting there. This is really tasty. I got it with, uh, it's a cheeseburger with uh, fried onions and some mayonnaise and mustard. Never been a big man on ketchup. I eat mayonnaise on my fries and everything else. That's just kind of the way I am. I'm one of those weird people. <laughs> but life is good. So if you go look at this uh, nation, you're going to notice that there's a lot of geological things going on that people didn't realize before. When that 5.0 hit Virginia, they, back in, only a few years back, I forget how many years ago it was, they come to realize that, that they didn't think that fault was, line was there and there was a problem because they thought that there shouldn't be one there. So they started putting out sensors across the United States. And they've been finding things, friend. And I've only seen it once, and I don't even know where to tell you to go look at it. I don't think I saved it on my clues to the kingdom, but I might have. And that is, you can find underground fault lines of the United States. And I'm going to tell you something. You're going to notice two things on there when you go to do that. One is, Canada sits on what's called the Canadian Shield. It's a heavy rock base that spans the entire length of the Canadian border. Now, you might think that's coincidence that America and... Canada is separated by this rock based shield. You can call it whatever you want. And Mexico sits on an entire different tectonic plate altogether. So if you don't know what tectonic plates are, the world is made out of tectonic plates that move, and America and Canada sit on one together. However, Canada is on the rock base called the Canadian Shield. We are not. I'm not a big fan of dill pickles, but every now and then I like a dill pickle. And they gave me one with the burgers, so I'm eating it. <laughs> I personally, friend, am one of those people that like, uh, I like, like uh, the hamburger pickles, the sweet pickles. I used to like to get the Gergen sweet pickles, those real little ones. I can just, I'll get a jar of those every now and then and just pop them. <laughs> I go through phases for things. Sometimes I get it in mind for something. Sometimes I'll get the mind for a pineapple. And I'll just go buy a pineapple. I'll cut it up and I'll eat it like for an entire meal. I'll just sit there and eat pineapple. I'll do that for a couple times and I won't touch it again for a year. You just never know with me. <laughs> I'm a simple man. I'm very simple. And I just sometimes get my mind on things. God feeds me. That's all that matters. Because I'm talking about things that are kind of hard here, if you're on this video, you can shut it off if you don't want to listen. So when people are getting too close to me, I kind of shut up because everybody has free will and those that don't want to know the truth, I don't want to give it to them because they'll become scared as hell, right? So this truth I'm giving you isn't for the lighthearted. If you don't know Christ, you should not listen to what I'm saying. Because you're going to need some faith and some love. Because I'm here to raise riders of love, right? 
You know, that that's what Christ came to do was he told you that he who saves his life will lose it, but he who loses it for his sake will gain it. So I'm looking for the folks to believe what he said. If you don't believe what he said, I'm not your messenger. But my father's going to tell you the truth. So he's been giving you the truth. I'm not the only one telling you the truth, but I'm the only one that's telling you this part of the truth because most people don't know it because even those that see one thing, they don't see the other. And my father has me look around at everything so that I can see everything. And if I was not, if the father wasn't in me and I was in the father, then I would be scared to death. So that's the reason I'm always talking about these things and I'm always talking about it in the midst of Jesus. And it's the reason that I'm dragging it out between a sandwich because nobody will have time and patience to listen to it if they don't know Christ. <coughs> I've given you some of this stuff in other videos. I'm just laying out a bunch of it in one place again. And I rarely do this because people don't need to know if they're not if they're not seeking the kingdom because well then they're not going to make the right decision anyway so this is really a video for kingdom seekers I have to tell you why it is that I want you to mount So if you look at this nation, you'll see that you all know about the history of the San Andreas Fault. I mean, anybody that's got any kind of education in history of this nation knows about that one, right? Everybody think that was a terrible one. That one ain't so terrible, friend. You haven't even seen the worst of it. You've only seen the beginning. If you go look under Missouri, there's another fault. It's bigger than any other one in the recorded history of America. And they've just discovered it not that long ago. And they discovered it and they knew it, but they didn't know how bad it was. And they didn't realize, they didn't, you know, because back in the day they didn't have recorded history in Missouri because it was a frontier. What they do have is recorded history of the fact that some things did collapse and they knew it, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't an eye grabber. I'll tell you what will grab your attention. The fact that the uh, Mississippi River reversed in flow. The ship captain said they were going down the river, they were, and then all of a sudden they were going back up the river at high speed while trees were being launched off of the bottom of the ground, from up underneath the water, shooting up into the air. I don't know how many people lived, I don't know how many people died. I've just seen a ship captain, they interviewed him, and it, it was in a newspaper, and it, there's proof of it, you can go find it. And I've set it down here, and people went and looked, and they actually, <gasps> mm, excuse me, they did actually find history of it, but they didn't, some of them found that, but some of them found where people were talking about log cabins collapsing in the middle of the wilderness, and great shakings and trees falling. Friend, this is just no small thing that they're talking about. When it happened, they felt it in New York. It was recorded in New York people you don't understand it's over on the east coast is different than the west coast the the sand it's a sandy bottom a lot of america's built on sand kind of like jesus's parable built on build your house on the rock and your house won't fall build it on sand and it's going to come tumbling down a lot of america's built on more of a sandy condition I don't understand it all. I'm not saying that the whole thing, I can tell you Missouri is because they had sand, there's sand blows left from that happening. So there's a lot of sand in Missouri and how that happens when it's not next to the beach, don't ask me. I'm not a rocket scientist, friend. <laughs> I'm not a geologist. I'm telling you what I've listened to geologists talk about so that you might know that it's coming. Because it is. And they've been giving some time frames on that. You might want to go look. 
and they've been giving some time frames on that one in Washington. There's a specific name for it. I don't remember the name of it, but it's a Pacific Rim Fault. And it's right off the Washington coast, and it's the last fault line of the Pacific Rim to go off, and it hasn't gone off yet. So there's an Indian reservation out there that has bought that has built a tsunami-proof, earthquake-proof tower. <laughs> so from because they know that once the earthquake hits, they've got like 10 minutes to make it onto that tower, or else they drown. Because first the quake hits, then that water is going to be pushed on shore, and it's going to drown everybody. So it's going to create a tsunami. They already know that. They don't have to wonder it. You just saw part of that Pacific Rim fault go off in near history when it went off in Japan. And it wiped out a bunch of stuff. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you I know all this stuff. I'm just telling you that this is the stuff that my father led me to look at. And because I see how much of it there is and that it's all over the place and you all don't have a clue, I have to tell you this because... My father always gives you a messenger, period. So, America declared itself the second fruit, right? One nation under God. A Christian nation. Just like Israel had to pay for it, so do you. And he's going to do it before the end of the age in a way that you understand, because, because if you all don't repent, and he does make this judgment, it'll help everybody else come in line, and if you won't come into the wedding, they will after you after you collapse get that <laughs> this is all written in revelation i don't understand it my father just shows me all these things and i tell you about all these different things that he shows me but i don't know how to put it together i don't know how the time frame works i don't know any of that i'm just telling you what he shows me and you can go look at these things and you can't know that the bible's talking about that but you can see that there is a fault line in missouri that was far worse than the san andreas fault and they already know that the Pacific Rim Fault can go off so bad it can do major damage to Canada at the same time. I don't know how that works. I don't understand it all. I'm just telling you, I've listened to geologists talk about it. I didn't sit there and study it for days and months and years. I'm not like that. My father shows me what I need to know to talk on his camera so I can tell you that these things are happening. And the geologists that I saw talk about it said that every time that fault goes off, it usually sets off the San Andreas. That's what the history looks like. I don't know what to tell you. Go listen to geologists that know what they're talking about. I could be all wrong. If I don't talk to the Holy Spirit and I'm a crazy man, then you shouldn't listen to me, right? But if you know Jesus, you know Jesus said that, be glad I go to the Father, because I go to the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth will come to you, and even though what I told you is true, even greater truths will you be given. However, to receive more, you have to be willing to give more for it. So I got angry at my father. I promised him death because... So it doesn't matter whether I get it or not. I have to be willing to die. Christ didn't want to die. I don't want to die. <laughs> it's not about wanting to die. Who wants to die? If you have a life like mine, you wouldn't want to die. It's nothing greater than being in a relationship with the father and him taking care of you. I'm out here eating a burger and I got nothing, friend. <laughs> My life is wonderful, but everybody thinks I'm a nutcase. Do you think I hang out with other people? No, they don't like to hang around with me. They t hang around me too long, I start talking truth. I don't mean to, it just happens. It's my job. My job is to talk about the truth of love and the love of truth. I've got a whole tongue. If you don't want to talk about truth, you don't want to talk to me. You don't want to listen to me. But truth sometimes hurts and scary, and so I'm telling you some scary things, but if you don't know it, then you're not going to be prepared for the end of the age and you're not going to repent and there's going to be no riders because well there's already riders there's people out there telling you it's coming jonathan khan has been telling you america's been getting its harbingers if you don't believe me go believe him i don't care who you believe believe somebody for crying out loud if you say you know jesus because it's coming In this specific video, I'm going to leave me eating in here to bore you to death, like I said early, a little earlier on, because most of you won't have the patience to listen. You'll think I'm crazy and you'll go on. 
I don't want you to listen to this if you're not real, a serious, serious seeker of Christ. If you don't want to find the kingdom right now, right here, I'm not your messenger. If you want to find it, it's here. Christ told you it was. He said it would start off like a mustard seed and turn into a tree, right? Get big enough to give shade and rest to others. That's what you'll become. But then sometimes there's some of us that are like me that are called to a message. And we have to give what it is our Father gives to us because that's what we wanted. We wanted... We wanted to be a messenger of God. We all get a different message. Some of you get to give the warm, fuzzy stuff. That's not me. I'm giving that to you, but... Because Christ is love. So is my Father. But my Father's not going to judge you, but the Son will, so the Father doesn't have to. So my Father was loved from the beginning to the end because the Son's King. He does makes the judgments. So you can say that God is love, yet He will judge you. He does it because he doesn't do it. The Son does it for him so that he can be the experience of love because he is the original consciousness that created everything and it is all in him and he's in everything. And I can't even explain this to you because the church has created so much hypocrisy because they refuse to look at the truth of what Christ said. I don't like, You don't even have to understand Revelation. You don't even have to understand the Old Testament. If you believe in Christ, Christ will reveal to you what you need. <clears throat> And I don't do a whole lot of study. And I'll be quite honest with you. When I first started, when I when I made this deal with God, when I got so angry at him, I said, I don't care if you whip, beat, crucify me. You give me the truth that you kill me now. I didn't even believe in the Old Testament. I thought it was all wrong. I thought there's no way a God of love let all that happen. I didn't understand. So he started filling me in. In the beginning, there was only God. Where do you think God put everything? If he was all there was, there was nowhere else, nothing, there was no creation, where did he put creation? He'd have to create a son and then create the world through him, right? It's all written, friend. You won't believe me, you'll call me crazy, but I'm telling you, it's all there. So my father doesn't want to have to judge his own body however Christ has to, because Christ is king, that's his job. However, he doesn't have to come back and do it because he told you that if exactly how to become his mouthpiece. I'm his trumpet, friend. I don't want him to come back and dirty his garments. Why should he have to come back and murder a bunch of people when you're the one who did it to yourselves? You get that? Christians lied. They told false truths. Christ told you that you have to abide in him. Build your house on the rock. Offenses must come, but woe to those who bring them. Then you run around murder each other in the name of Jesus and act like you're getting my father's kingdom. That ain't what he said. And it's not what he meant. So if you choose to become my father's rider, you might give your life, but you won't take any. Offenses must come, but woe to those who bring them. He wasn't a liar. So I'm telling you that those that choose Christ are going to choose love. And some of us are going to have to stand and lose our life. That's just the nature of it. It's nothing personal. God doesn't ma doesn't matter to me because i got eternal life, right? How about you? Isn't that what Jesus said? Believe in me, you get eternal life. So why is everybody scared to die? Why are we letting them do to us this to us? It makes zero sense what this nation's doing. It makes zero sense the Christians are allowing it. Martin Luther King wouldn't let it, his people be treated this way, and I won't let you treat my people this way. I'm an American, friend. You corporate elite are going to quit what, doing what you're doing, or I'm going to drag your beast straight back into hell. I ain't lying to you. But by the time you hear us, it'll be too late. There's Riders Mountain, friend. My arrows have been hitting their targets for years.
Goliath just doesn't know he fell yet. But every rider my arrow hits. See, I can't defeat the dragon, right? I'm one man. I stand up against it. You all call me crazy, me throw me in a psych hospital, prison, whatever. You know, the dragon does me what it will. That's your government and the public and publicly traded corporations, the, the elite that have bought them out, that you sold them into slavery. They are corporate slaves. But I've been launching arrows. So it doesn't matter. Kill me today, you've done nothing. What you will do is, somebody better be willing to die in order to live. Somebody be better be willing to stand up and try to bring some light while the darkness is coming. Because if you can't see the darkness coming, you're blind as hell. You call what's good evil and what is evil good, and now you got the churches doing it. They're turning all to Satan's sons. Sons of selfishness, every one of them. I'm here to call you sons of Satan. I don't care. Church has become like a bunch of cowards. Ain't none of you believe what Jesus said was true. He told you, if you save your life, you will lose it. He was not a liar, friend. I mean, how much time have you had to turn your mustard seed into a mustard tree? Have you done that? Have you been out feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, visiting the sick and in prison? I hope so, friend. Because if not, you're not going to have any oil for your lamp. You're going to run to the store and it's going to be too late. The door to the wedding is going to close. And you're going to be left on the outside. So not only do you have those few major fault lines that I just mentioned, they're all over the place that I don't even know where they're at. And you have them in Texas and Oklahoma, which is from this oil drilling. Did you wonder why it is that they are trying not to drill the oil out of the country too much? It's because they've already built arcs here, friend. They don't want to destroy their arcs. They know what they're doing. You don't. They fooled you. They mistaken you for fools. Are you a fool? I'm no fool. They're buying up your farmland. Do you know why? They want you to eat meat that they produce without creating an animal. Do you understand that? They want you to eat lab-grown meat. How long do you think that'll last? Do you know that I've already heard things talking about it? it's t tumor causing? Will your FDA tell you the truth? They're sold slaves, friend, every one of them. I can tell you that for a fact because I knew a girl that used to work for the FDA. They gave her an award for doing such a great job, then fired her because none of the corporations let her work there. Did you know that the corporate corporations get to decide whether an FDA agent comes in their factory or not? Right? So the fox decides what hens come in their house. You get that, right? They got this backwards. The FDA was supposed to be the fox in the hen house, but they're actually the hens that go in the fox house. You have let them to do this to you, friend. If you're an American, you're letting them murder your children. Christ is going to ask you why. He's going to say, I told you you got to lose your life to gain it. I'm on here talking. You know dragon's coming from me, friend. But I don't have many arrows left, but I keep shooting them. As long as God keeps leaving me breathing, I'll be shooting arrows into the internet. The cloud that everyone could see. I thundered and you didn't listen. You're going to have nobody to blame but yourself when you have to answer to Christ through them words. On the last day, he doesn't have to come. I already told you that his words are going to judge you. He doesn't even have to show up to do it. It literally says that right in the Bible. He told you, I came to save you, not to judge you, but another will come. He's not coming back to dirty his garments. 
And if you're a Christian that wants him to come back and dirty his garment, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should ask the perfect one to come back and do it. That's shameful. And you can crucify me for saying it, but I'm going to say it. I don't want my Lord to come back and dirty his garments. Mine are already filthy. Why don't I just do it? Let you murder me instead. You crucified him. I'll let you crucify me. It's time for a new choice. Love over selfishness. That brings my father's kingdom. Period. If we don't make that choice, we pay the price. That was a good burger, friend. It's a good thing to have good food when you're given a hard message. Because God is love, and so is Christ. But Christ is the king, so he does have to do what he has to do. But he doesn't have to do it because he sends another in his place, just like he told you in right there in the Bible, right? This was all stated in advance. The Pharisees won't tell you that because they... they Go get degrees from men to get degrees from men, and they'll lie to you to the end because they love their, you know, they love to wear their robes long and their phylacteries wide, the best seats at banquets, greetings in the marketplace, everything Jesus said. Is it not still true, friend? Am I a liar? Was Christ a liar? So American Christians have an accountability coming that they just have no clue about. And if none of you will stand with you, me, I'll die alone. I just don't care. But my father will not have to send back the firstborn to dirty his garments because Christians refuse to do the right thing. So you're going to either go out and feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick and in prison. You're going to do the things he asks. Some of you are going to mount your horses with me and ride. Or you're going to get what's coming and I've told you exactly now I've just laid some of that out if you start thinking about exactly what would happen if that happened I won't need to tell you anymore what do you think's going to happen with all these people you've got stacked in prison like cordwood you were so busy out glorifying yourselves instead of feeding Lazarus Christ told you that right Christ told you that if you leave Lazarus starve outside of your gate you get received across the great divide. Christ wasn't a liar and he wasn't talking to the Jews. He was talking to the Christians. They're the only ones that listened to him. He's, he's the ones that they, he gave forgiveness. Who's he going to cast into prison and pay all that's due? Christians. That's what he said. He said those that asked him for forgiveness and then didn't give it, he was going to call wicked servants and th throw into prison. Where's prison? It's the end of the age. I'm not telling you any lies here, friend. I'm telling you the truth. You don't have to believe me. Just believe the Bible. If you don't believe the Bible, then I get it. If you're an atheist, I don't blame you for thinking I'm a nutcase. <laughs> you didn't say you know Jesus. I did, though. I've got accountability coming, friend. i got to answer to my Lord. But I answer to him right here. I have to speak with a whole tongue. I'm not allowed to speak with a half a tongue. Messenger for God doesn't speak half-truths. That makes you a serpent, a snake. Makes you like Satan, sons of Satan. Makes you sons of selfishness. You, you'll glorify yourself so that you can steal it from my father, and at the end he's going to make you pay your debt. So I'm not here to take any credit, because of myself I am nothing. It is the Father who doeth the works. Not even the words I speak are on my behalf, but on behalf of the Father who sent me. Christ said this, he said, a student is not greater than his teacher. It's enough to be like him. If I take credit for this, then I get the credit. And I don't want the credit, friend. Who wants the credit for what I'm saying? Not I, says I. And I think I'm going to leave everything in here. I might even leave me picking my teeth, blowing my nose, just so that you all will not believe a thing I say. Because I want you, if, if you're not going to go, if you don't know Jesus, I don't want you to listen to me because you're not going to find faith. I mean, if you want to know Jesus, I'm telling you right now, you're going to need to know him at the end of the age if you're going to want light. He is the light. 
the truth, and the life. But those that called him a liar and called him the life were not calling him the truth. And because they do, there's a debt for that. So this is a great time to get a red letter edition of the Bible and read red. Understand what he said and what he meant. I've been breaking down parables for you so that you can, but you don't have to believe me because you really shouldn't. Because when you see who I was, I'm just not worth it. I'm the prodigal son, like I've said a hundred times over, if not a thousand. So I'm nothing special, but my father forgave me my debt. He'll forgive you yours. I don't care what you've done. Today's a great day to make a new choice. Choose love over selfishness. Choose the kingdom over the world. That's how this works. It's the way it's always worked. But he hid it. He said, I'm going to speak in parables so they don't understand lest they turn and be forgiven. Why didn't he want you forgiven? Why haven't you asked that question? Have you asked that question? Did it make you mad? It made me mad. I want to throw down my Bible, friend. I've told you that a hundred times. I was like, what do you mean you don't want me forgiven? I'm not lying. This relationship with God, it's been a rocky road for me, friend. Because I did believe Jesus was the truth. I just couldn't figure out what he was saying. He was like speaking a foreign language to me. But when I finally figured out what he was saying, he was saying that the purpose of the world is to come to know love by experience. But the only way that one can have more is if another have less. So he has to allow this experience where some people have more and some people have less. And then no matter what you have more of, you can give more of that to those that have less of what you have. So you might have more knowledge or more love or more money. Whatever it is, you can give more to others in the name of God. And that makes you in the image and likeness to Christ. That's what Christ did. He didn't, wasn't like giving away money. He didn't have any, right? So we all have something. And if you don't have anything yet, you can because my father will give it to you. But you have to believe in him for it. And you have to want to do it for the right reason. I mean, he'll give it to you if you have faith in him. He told you that it's kind of like that movie, That Secret. If you believe, you will get it. But if you do the wrong thing with it and you don't get to know Christ, well, then you understand that that genie that you were getting it from was Satan, and now you owe Satan's price, right? You understand that, right? That this is Satan's kingdom, so those that seek selfishness seek Satan. Those that seek love seek Christ. They seek forgiveness. They f seek truth. All the things that make this life worth living. Well, friend, I've even drawn this out to be a long movie. I'm going to leave all the food chewing in so that you don't really look at this, unless you do. <laughs> but if you don't know me, you'll be bored to death, and I won't break this one down into shorts. Because I'm telling you, I've only touched the tip of the iceberg of exactly how bad this is going to look. And you know they're trying to change over to digital money. And you know that they're not going to be able to do that unless they destroy the... American dollar. You understand that, right? You know, people are flying across the border, right? You understand this is all provoked, right? You understand the corporate elite through the World Economic Forum and the World Health Organization are setting you up, right? If you don't, you've got nobody to blame but yourself. You could have woke up. Christ told you, do not go to sleep. Anybody that sees what they're doing, can put this together it's just you have to have faith you got to have courage you got to and courage comes through faith otherwise you grab a gun and you start digging a foxhole that's not what that's not the riders i'm looking for if that's you go dig a hole and hide in it but christ told you that day comes everybody pays their debt including those that built underground arcs including the corporate elite are paying their debt my father's sealing them in their tombs don't go get in there because they'll promise you you eat from the menu and you'll be on it. Those folks, their hearts are hard, man. You don't want to be in no hole sealed with them. Mm -mm. I'm telling you, you don't. You all just don't understand exactly how bad bad can get until people start getting hungry and they run out of options on how to survive. And you think because you live in America that that'll never happen here. Yet you've given the entire food chain over to the 
corporations to control. And the government did it while you were sleeping. I'm not here with good news, friend. The good news is that Christ will forgive you, and if you will seek him out, you'll find a greater kingdom. But you're running out of time. He told you the messenger was coming at a late hour. Nobody else will say what I'm saying because they know they're going to get killed for it. They say this and say that, but they don't say much. So one of us have to be willing to die, friend. One of us have to be willing to go to the cross. If you won't be, I will. You're not doing this to your kids. You're not doing it to mine, even though I don't have kids of my own. My father didn't promise America anything. You might have declared yourself one nation under God, but the only promise he made was to Abraham, friend. That's the bloodline that has to survive, and they're already back in Israel, most of them. And you could see exactly why it is they're going to attack Israel if you'd look, but... I don't want to go into that because the Holy Spirit's kind of telling me not to, right? So all this stuff that's going down in the end of the age is logical, makes sense. But I'm not here to tell it to you because I'm not here to provoke them to have a reason why to do anything. Let them figure it out for themselves. Satan's going to give them everything they need to make this go down exactly the way it needs to. Except it doesn't need to, but since nobody will make a new choice since the Christians decided that they don't, have to feed Lazarus starving outside of their gate, they kind of went whoops. It's time to fix the whoops, friend. You don't want the government to take care of the sick and the hungry. You won't do it because Christ told you to. Satan's cure is kill them all. Is that your cure, friend? I hope not, because if not, you don't know Christ. Christ said, love them all. I'd feed every last one of you if I could. My father took everything from me. I don't even have credit with man anymore. He took it all. He said, you're going to have to give everything to me, and you're going to look disgusting, and nobody's going to believe you, because you just look like a liar. So you'll either know me because you know my words, because you know Christ, or you won't. But a lot of you that say you're Christian, you don't know Christ at all. At all. Not in the least. You've become the most when he told you to be the least. He said a student is not greater than his teacher. It's enough to be like him. He said call no man teacher. I'm your teacher. Is he your teacher? Alright friend. Well I've gone on enough and I've said enough horrible things on one video. Because I hate to say it. Because sooner or later one of you got to come nail me up. Right? The dragon's going to find me. It's only a matter of time. You can only say so much for so long. But that's God's will, then it's God's will. And if it's not, then it won't. Because my father is a miracle worker. <laughs> Nothing gets done without his approval. Satan couldn't find me because he's blind. He has scales on his eyes. My father lets him lose the scales as it serves his purpose. You all think that this Satan could fight against God. He never stood a chance, friend. If you're on his side, you're on the losing side. It never stood a chance. Those of you that worship selfishness, you're screwed. Choose love. All right, friend. Well, I do love you because my father loves you. And I don't care what you did yesterday. I love you anyway. Because my father loves you. But whatever Christ tells me to say, I'm going to say. If you won't clean your house up, I will tear your house down. And I am talking to the church. I ain't lying to you. I've been doing it. I've been tearing it down brick by brick, and you guys don't even see it coming. Sooner or later, there's the whispers in the churches. There's no way that I've been putting out this many videos for four years, and there's not a whisper going on in the churches, friend. My arrows have struck their target. Whether you see it or not doesn't matter. I don't see where they landed. If they had to land somewhere, if you're listening to this, someone else did too. If it got 10 views and you're one of them, that means nine other people who just heard what I said, right? I mean, this isn't rocket science, friend. And I'm not that smart, but my father's a genius beyond compare. <laughs> he is so great that... You can't even imagine. I saw him in the beginning, and I still can't comprehend him. He's just amazing. 
He's brilliant. It's just, it's just incredible. And the more he shows me, the greater he becomes. But he'll be loved. And that way, you know, that's why Christ is going to do this. So the Father doesn't have to, right? You get that. God is love. Beginning to end. Forever and ever. God is love. The Son, on the other hand, will judge you so the Father doesn't have to. And he will use a rider that rides a white horse, wears a crown, carries a bow, and launched his arrows into a cloud that everyone could see. So you can believe that or not, but it is what it is. All right, friend. Well, may God bless you and yours.